Good morning. This is Judy. I am at Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia, and it is humid and rainy this morning. So, um, means we're moving a little slow, but I am so excited about this project. I, yes, I, okay, so, but we, before we get to the project, <laughs> I have to show you, um, to give you a few announcements. So, um, all right, what are those announcements? First of all, uh, for those of you who love CAFE, we are just very, very excited to be one of the stores where CAFE is coming to for his book tour. And it's going to be quilt inspired by whales. We will have a lecture on Friday. We have lots of space for that. We hope everybody can come. We have a, a workshop on Saturday and a workshop on Sunday. Uh, when I left work yesterday, we only had a couple spaces left in Saturday, and we only had a and we had more spaces on Sunday. Now, our building was built a long time ago, so we do not have an elevator in the building. So we are going to be on our second floor, and I'm I'm very sorry that makes it hard for some of our customers and impossible to others. But just stay tuned. We have more things coming, and we hope to include you in that wonderful weekend. Um, with some other things that we have going on. So just be patient with us. Um, but we do expect the workshops to sell out this week and we will close them and we will take a couple of names as a wait list and, and you can email it when you see the classes sold. We have received a special price at a Hilton in Alexandria that is actually wonderfully placed. If you've not been to Alexandria before, there's uh, some really great historic um, creatives art uh, Alexandria old town Alexandria is maybe 15 20 minutes from us uh, so we highly recommend coming if you can for that three-day weekend and for those of us who live locally who sometimes forget how wonderful an area it is and you know maybe you want to get out and see a few more things so that's all cave cave weekend we have the, um, our yard sale, warehouse sale, rain or shine is gonna be June 25th, 9 a.m. to two. And at two o'clock we, uh, we will start packing up. We do have our newsletter that comes out on Wednesdays, five o'clock on Wednesdays. And then we have what's called, a, we call it a second send. So we're not trying to just keep pounding you with emails that's not our our business policy but we do have a second send if you didn't get a chance to open Wednesday we're gonna send it to you again this morning if you have no time you have no time just hit the delete button um, so but that's kind of why if you see that you get it a second time that's why because you didn't open it the first time but please we know life is busy around these places just hit the delete if you can't get it you can't get it no worries um but we do want to keep you informed we do um you know one of the places when i pre-pandemic when i traveled and went to shows the first thing people came up to me and said was i love your newsletter i love your newsletter because sharon and and our team try to give you more information than you know yeah we're selling you because we have to stay in business but we're also trying to give you some information, what's going on. Um, you know, we, we have uh, affiliations with SACWA. We have, uh, we're a sponsor of a Sacred Threads, which is coming up. And we want you to be aware of the entries when things come and when the show is, when the, when the, because you know, you're going to want to see it. So that's our purpose in building our community. And, yes we need to sell things to stay and create our community and be part of that so anyway um we do have a class that's in person this is gwen lafleur's first class in person here we do still have some since spots the uh, since the pandemic yes gwen taught for us over the pandemic which we were really um quite lucky and thrilled about so these are some more samples for her class and they are on the web and you can sign up and they are taking place at Artistic Artifacts on the first floor. <clears throat> and he 
here. So these are um, a couple of more additional samples for you. All right, and we do have some spots left. I'm sorry, please look up the date and the price. June 25th. June 25th, oh, the same day. So you can come early, shop the uh, yard sale, and then come to a class. And it's called Stitch Plus Glue, so it's for paper people as well as fabric people. Oh, all right. Lynn's like our soul sister. She, she combines everything and does a really fabulous job. So, okay, thank you, Chris. Here's these, I'm gonna give you those. All right, any additional announcements? Do I think I covered them all? You added a dye day? Oh, I did add in a July. dye in July. Okay, so that's open as well. Uh, I seem to be doing m much more traveling this year, so that, that is a little bit tougher to get those classes scheduled in. So there is another dye day up on the calendar. I know people have been asking for it, so we have that there. And um, okay, let's talk about books. I, I seem to have this thing about fabric books. So on a previous morning, we talked about um, an actual book that, that reads like a book. And um, that is going to be, you'll find that on our YouTube channel, Artistic Artifacts YouTube. And that will be there. So this is a different type of book. Now, I was introduced to, to this kind of folding accordion book by Laura Cater Woods. Um, boy, long time ago, 2008 maybe. I took a class from Laura and, it, and uh, what a wonderful opportunity. It was a fabulous class. Um, pretty much life-changing for me. So she was taught us how to do these books and you can see I have um, spears in there. You know those things that you find in the grocery store? And then here's the other side. So I'm, yeah. So it, it was double-sided and the whole idea is that it stands on a table. And I use pictures, I use hand dyes, I use scraps. I, I just kind of, this was pictures I think I took in the Japanese garden in Oregon. It was quite nice. So then I decided, well, I'll, I'll work on a different format where it doesn't stand. Yeah, we have a lot of things on the table. Thanks, Chris. And I'll use the same idea of an accordion but it, it is again a book. So this is what I've done here. I'm going to show you the front, but this is the back. So I did a little bit here. And I think these were a pair of my mom's shorts, you know, back in the, back in the eighties, you got the, some of this, um, patchwork things from Indonesia in the, in the clothing stores. And so my mom, saved her shorts for me and I cut them up because neither one of us could get in them anymore. And these pictures are all Indonesian women that I found on uh, the web. So it was just a book that obviously I did after my trip to Indonesia and I was, these are very old pictures. I think the Netherlands, there's a couple museums uh, in Holland that have an incredible treasure trove of pictures that I downloaded and I printed them on EQ printables and I fused them on. Now, when I make my books, as with the other books, I always have one side that's a little more detailed than the other. And I think that it's just easier that way um, I can do all of my work, I can stitch, I can do any kind of uh, free motion or buttons or things, and then I hide them with the one side with fusible. So this is this one. All right, so after I took Laura's class, I was like, okay, so Maybe I'm gonna do it on my own. So here's another one. And these are chopsticks 
that I dyed on dye day. So I used them to wrap the fabric and create a pattern and then I saved them. We have um, indigo blue clips. What are the clothes clips that we Close sell? Pins. Clothes pins that we sell because they've been dyed because we use them to make patterns. So those, so we, you know, <laughs> we don't get rid of much. That one matches your quilt. Yeah, it does. It's so nice to pull these out. Yeah. Somebody said they'd make look nice on a mantle. Yes, absolutely fabulous. I do not have a mantle in my house. So, but yeah, I have always thought that that would be great. We have a coffee table that I put them out on every once in a while, or we have deep window cells where um, they, I get those. Maybe they could put a faux mantle in your, um, <laughs> in your bedroom construction. <laughs> this one um, is my Valentine one. And so it's again, it's another folding book. And I've connected it with uh, ribbons. You can see in between the pages, there's ribbons. Vintage pictures, Valentines. And then the back is just these I was into crazy quilting at that time that I I did and I love hearts I have hearts in my hallway my mom has hearts in her hallway so I had make made these crazy quilt pieces that never got assembled into a quilt so I used them on the back and I would say for sure if you have orphan blocks that maybe you haven't used I, I would use those in a book pull them out see if you have some colorways that work and Somebody said it'd be a good, a good way to practice a free motion quilting. Yes, absolutely. Um, or hand stitching. And or hand stitching. Okay, and I have one more sample to show you, and then I'll show you what. Try to explain how I <laughs> how I work. <laughs> so this is a vintage piece here. And this is another accordion book. Okay, helps if we're right side up. And um, this one is uh, our um, relative in Ohio had pictures of her mom. And so I made her a book and asked her permission to use her um, pictures to make myself a book. So she did get one of these. And I love the use of the doll clothes. That was. I just thought that was the coolest thing. I was really, really excited. And that's important because what I used in the piece that I'm gonna show you today is I used doll clothes. So, and then the back is just plain. So I, I used, and this is all fused for the most part. I fuse everything down with Misty Fuse and then I do my stitching on top of that. All right, so how did I make the ones that I have? So what I did, Kyle, you can do kind of a scan of, I said that the doll clothes were really important and, the, and they are, so this is what I worked on. And I have taken pieces of Tilda. So Tilda um, Cotton Beach, she has these wonderful faces. And if you um, ever go into Tilda World, which is a great website with Tilda products, you will uh, see that she is a lover of dolls as well. So this comes on a bolt. And I just thought, oh, how perfect. I can't draw faces, so I just use somebody else's faces. So this is in stock and online along with quite a lot of other Tilda fabrics. So this is a, a very popular, Tilda is a very popular designer for us here at Artistic Artifacts. So how did I do this? <laughs> it's, it's funny because I just kind of, 
I, I assembled all this last night, but I've been thinking about it for a while. As I, I don't get a designated period of time, and I, I know it's not unusual for a lot of you to just get bits and pieces of time also. And my process is that I have an idea and then I start pulling things. Like several days ago, I actually have a box of doll clothes that I pulled out several days ago. I cut these faces out several days ago and I just kind of started going, okay, well, this dress, do I really need all that fabric on this dress? This is a doll, this is, this is a, and I'm like, so, okay, well, let's think about that a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll have this little coat be one of hers here. And I, I just kind of play with it over time. I, and then when I am actually to the point where I'm assembling it, I've done a lot of the designing or thinking about the creative part of it. So then it becomes technical execution, which, you know, me sometimes is a little tricky. But that's okay. Um, that's the fun of it, is learning through things. So, like, this was a doll skirt that went with this one. All right, but I deconstructed it. I went, ooh, I can get two skirts out of this one. So I did that. And then you can see this one. I, I just don't, I look at doll clothes. I, and it's funny because now when I go to flea markets and things, I look at the kids and see if I can find in the kids area these little boxes of these doll clothes. Now, what I started with, and you can see this is lightweight. I just started with a heavy Pellon um, interfacing because I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna end up with. Was I gonna have a folding book? Was I gonna have a standing book? I wasn't sure. So this allows me to work on two pages. I can do a front and a back. Like if you look at these guys, this, this could be, this is hand dyed trims that you can use from our inspiration packs. You can get lots of little tidbits in there. So I thought, okay, so maybe I'm gonna do um, uh, backs and fronts. Now I decided I'm gonna have this in display in the store, so I'm really just gonna focus on one side. Now this is, so let's see what you think. This is the original, and I know for sure this was Barbie. But then when I put this here, this little hand dyed piece, I think it looks much better. So I'll add that. And I can do that by hand very quickly with some sewing thread. All right, now, if I want things to stand or I want a little bit more firmness in the, um, in the pages, see, I mean, because you can see that this is going to be a Peltex. 70, 71, 72, it doesn't matter, but this is 70. So this is gonna give me stiffness. Now, at this point in the plan, I could put this and this and sew these two together. I would probably fuse them and you can sew them. So now I have a little bit more stiffness. Does that make sense? And this is one of my favorite tools is this Peltex. I use Peltex a lot for a lot of many different things. So now, let me see. Um, what I wanna do is, see I hadn't thought the whole thing through all the way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me. Uh, my favorite fusible is Misty Fuse. This I use this all the time. I use it like glue. I take little pieces. I actually Misty Fuse this this uh, trim down. It, it's really a very versatile tool. So while you're getting that, uh -huh. Suzanne Meter has a nice comment. She said they're great um, to work with for people with memory issues, oh. the photos and the textures. Um, oh, using personal memorabilia is easier than working with a photo album. What a great idea. That's wonderful. 
That is great. Thank you, Suzanne. All right, so here's my, this is my Misty Fuse. It doesn't come with paper. And Kyle, maybe come around this way and we can show where's my glass. So there's a question is, do you pre-cut the interfacing and base pieces first? Um, I do usually cut them first. Most of the time, I cut these actually exact, which is not like me at all. Um, only because it gives me my space that I use to design. So I will generally cut them in advance or at least get close that maybe I can then trim them. So, um, but yeah, I wanna see what my area is for designing so, so that I don't go too small or I don't go too big. That's, um, you know, both, both ways. So yes, good question. And if you start on the smaller, the thinner piece, you can, um, you know, you can change your mind. Like I can still add the thicker piece um, in the middle if I want more stabilization and I've done my designing on the thinner ones. Okay. Let's see. This also iron gets pretty hot. And I am using a Teflon sheet when I'm ironing the Misty Fuse, which actually makes it a little bit, you know, you need definitely heat to make it melt and fuse. I'm on a wool uh, ironing mat that we have in the store. I use those. I really like that because I can keep it close to me. Can you see the shine there? That's the Misty Fuse. All right, so now here's the tricky part. So I have three dimensions on my dress here. What I should have done, which I don't think I did, is I would bring a towel and because the terry cloth would give you a little cushion for your three dimensions. Um, but we well, forgot that. I remembered everything else, um, and I'm going to fuse this. Wool mat should. Yeah, should give a little bit. The same idea. And I'm going to I fuse everything, but I am going to sew also. There was a uh, previous comment by Kitty Ann. Um, a couple minutes ago, mm -hmm. uh, saying that there is a Facebook group uh, for Tilda's Dolls and Animals. Um, oh, okay. That, that does not surprise me. That's wonderful. I can post my dolls on there. There, We do have several books. Um, I, she definitely has patterns for her dolls. I think they're wonderful. Um, all right. So that'll work. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do on top of that, and you can see this little edging here. I don't worry about that. If I want to, I can trim it, but I can assure you it's going to get covered. So, um, let me. So I have a, I'm, I'm working on a Bernina 480. Uh, let's see, I'm going to attempt to do a zigzag. Okay, I have the right stitch plate on. <laughs> My glue, ooh, yeah. Let's. Um, this allows me to go um, <clears throat> nine inches, uh, nine millimeters. And of course, I didn't try this before I before I went online. <laughs> I have um, a zigzag, but I could just as easily do a straight stitch. Which I might start soon. I'm using Wonderfill uh, cotton thread. You can use um, 12 weight. Let's move this. Uh, So what I just did is I have a number 10 foot 
uh, which is the wrong one because it's a D foot and this is not a D machine. Sorry. Um, and I moved my needle position. It's really not a, <clears throat> not a good idea to use a D foot when you're uh, don't have a D machine dual feed machine. I just am used to it because my one at home, I have a 770 and it is dual and I live the dual feed. So just the foot just doesn't operate the way it's supposed to. So Do what I say, not what I do. That's a normal thing. Okay, there is a cutter on this. forget I have to lift the foot the 770 the foot lifts automatically so I just went ahead and did this now let me get a correct foot on let's see so this would take C feet for the most part so not all the Bernina feet come in uh, they they will say 10 10 C 10 D and depending on your machine and the features that it has determines which foot you're going to need. Um, just make sure you have the right foot for the right job, for the task that you want. It's really important. Okay, so what I did, this is about, I, I guessed, this is maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, somewhere in that range. I, I did not pre-prove that. I'm just, you know, you could just fold these edges down so they're, they're not raw, but generally I don't care about that. And I'm going to take this right here. So now I'm going to start my connector. Um, And again, if you're a neater person than me, that's fine. That's okay. You do it to what you like. Um, part of the, the look and feel is, for me, is a little bit uh, foot down, foot down. So I have that zigzag underneath there that's holding it. And I'm probably going to sew this twice. <clears throat> this is why I do not do New York beauties. I'm not, I am not a precision person. Although I love those quilts. So I want to just make sure that I have both sides. If I have to go down through it again, it's not a big deal, um, which I just might do. All right. Oh, foot down. I love the automatic foot, but. try to show you how versatile these Berninas are. Even though it's not the model that I'm using, there's so much that can be done with them. Now, the idea is that I'm going to make this stand. So I use old knitting needles. 
you can see there's still some space. <clears throat> and what I would do um, for the sake of samples, I don't have my backside on here. All right, we'll just do it, show you. Take. So um, I can feel it. Again, you have to do what you're comfortable with. If it's, if it's more comfortable for you to pin things, to um, sew from the other side, you just have to do what you're comfortable with. Now, I'm gonna go back to a zigzag because I just wanna make sure I'm catching everything. would do is I'm going to use these I, I collect these old knitting needles and now it's a little bit more stable but I actually have two options I could put in a thread here and tie it around the knitting needle I could put some glue on the knitting needle because I you know I it'll fall gravity will just pull it so that is what the plan is for this and I will have it um, I'm not I leave on a business trip soon so I won't have it tomorrow and I will have it on display in the store for those of you and when it's finished we'll do um, a little reel that shows you the pages all finished so that's how you you that's how I do them you can use ribbons if you don't want a um, channel you, there's all kinds of ways of doing it but I tend to work page by page this allows me to work individually and not worry about if I'm sewing on one side what did I do with the other side what happened to it what did it what what went through so that's one of the reasons why I kind of have developed this um, because I kind of design as I go um, I'll change my mind like this is how this she came in this way this way to this morning and then as I'm going through my pile I'm like oh well you know let's put this on here so I'm always thinking of adding things. Um, these tilde buttons are just absolutely perfect. I'm gonna use some there. And I have a picture of what it looked like in my studio <laughs> this morning, kind of the morning after. Um, and you know, this is, this is how I work. I have piles and piles, so we'll post that for you just so, you know, it, it's, it, creativity can be messy, it's okay. All right, so this week in our newsletter, we will have new Tilda collections. They are in the store right now, but I'm sorry, they are not up. This is Chic Escape, and then we have these. Her little bundles her bundles are absolutely wonderful but we will also have yardage uh, at this point our plan going forward is buy we buy all of her collections so we feel confident that we can be your tilde store we also have some books in here um, and as I said we have the chambray we have it on bolts we have it on a package we do have the rolls bundles they're really wonderful so these are literally just came in our door and if you watched we had a comment sold on Thursday that you can still go in you can sign up for our app artistic artifacts you download the app and you can still shop those items but one of the things that we had on on our comment sold are wood blocks so what how cool would that be I, I can I can use wings somewhere so that I did this wood block with the wings and then I can put fusible on the back and I can they'll they'll show up here somewhere for sure all right any questions
it's it's a little bit after 10 so we have to get to work in the store we're here until 4 today and if you have any questions and, and you know need to communicate with us sales at artisticartifacts.com oh the quilt yes I can talk about the quilt and Facebook we do have a group that's called artistic artifacts creative minds that you can join so this is a book it's Katie is the pattern GE designs it's using the stripology ruler and we do have this in stock and this is with Cotton Beach so we were able to create that and and I use some um, uh, full blocks of the fabrics and then I did some cutting I flipped them you can see I mean the, the way I do it it I use some chambray in there as well and I just this this sea fan fabric comes in multiple colors I absolutely adore this it's absolutely fabulous um, we had a question <coughs> about the fabric for the doll faces that is sold by um, the half yard and it is there's two um, this is the tilde and Chris brought me a bolt did she take it back oh no it's behind you hold on I think we have both backgrounds available. I, I, I'm not 100% sure. So it came in a gray and then, and then a green. And this is sold by the half yard on our website. Okay. And then just to be clear on the process for the books, <laughs> uh, you do one side, join the front and the back, and then do the spine. Yes, I do. Okay, that's for Kathy. Uh, and then uh, that looks like it's it. All right. Okay, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you being part of the Artistic Artifacts community. And thank you. Bye.